Greetings to people everywhere. Today you will hear a word from heaven that will change the course of your life. I'm believing that as we get into the word of the Lord today, the word will be taught and preached with clarity. It will bring balance and direction and it will lift your faith up to believe in the things of God. We believe that as you keep listening, the power of God will come upon you and meet your need. Now, fasting is not a religious activity. Fasting is a spiritual activity. So your fast is unto God. Welcome to the Hour of Solution. Prayer and fasting, the master says, brings you the dividends of faithfulness. Fasting has a way of making you believe some crazy stuff, that God can do it. But when your mind is clogged, one of the worst things in life is to walk with somebody who has no understanding. Sing that again. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood us, place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I want to be. Father, thank you for the teaching of the word of God. We ask in the name of the Lord Jesus that we will be taught to grow and to be nurtured in you. Spirit of God, help us to understand the things that are freely given to us by the Holy Ghost. We promise you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, we turn to the 58th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 58. And um, we are dealing with the subject, understanding fasting. Understanding fasting. When, as you turn to Isaiah 58, well, as you turn to Isaiah 58, I want you to understand what fasting isn't. I want you to understand what fasting isn't. Fasting is not dieting, even though it may lead to losing some weight. But fasting, the purpose of fasting, fasting is not dieting. If you want to go on a diet, just go on a diet. Fasting does not replace dieting. But yeah, you may benefit from um Losing a few pounds when you're on a prolonged fast. But the purpose of a fast is solely not for dieting. There are people that use the moment of fasting as a time that they concentrate mostly on their diet. They concentrate on weight loss. If that's all you are seeking God for, then that's all you are getting. The purpose of fasting Secondly, it's not to twist the hand of God. I've had many well-meaning believers say that, well, when I fast, I will be able to twist God's arm. You can't even twist somebody's arm, much more to talk about the Almighty. In fasting, we come into compliance with God's already executed word. And we line ourselves with that word of God. Fasting does not twist God's arm. In other words, fasting is not intended to get God to do what, in other words, in the sovereignty he will never do. But in fasting, we become sensitive to the Holy Ghost. 
and those things that are already being made available to us in the Word of God and by the Spirit of God, those things, because our spirit man is now active, we become more sensitive to what is already available to us. Now, we may use terms like new revelation, rima, and so forth and so forth. But the underlying truth remains that we do not change God's word through fasting. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Praise the Lord. We do not change God's mind so as to say that the Lord had a certain predisposition to something. Yeah, there are, there, in Scripture, in Malachi, it says, I'm the Lord, I change it not, right? But there are many times that people will come before God, like Moses and like Aaron, and through prayer and intercession, God would turn away from his anger. It does not mean that he would never have turned from his anger. It does mean that somebody was willing enough to enter into the sacredness of God to see that if we will repent and turn away from this wicked thing, the Lord would be, avert his anger. And so when God turns away his anger, we do not say that we are the ones who change his anger. But we do say that we, we got a good grain of Holy Ghost sense. Not common sense, because it's not natural. We got a good grain of spiritual information to note and understand that if we will come in compliance with God and fall in his pattern, that which he would have done in Nineveh, that which he would have done in a you know, land so far like Sodom, would have destroyed Lot and the rest of his family. God will turn around because of intercession and because of prayer. It has always been his nature. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, if my people who are called by my if they will, in Second Chronicles, I believe it's 7 and 14. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. Yes, my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and watch and seek my face. That's fasting. And seek my face. That's fasting. And turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. He promises already to hear from heaven. So when we meet the requirement, he turns. Amen. Stay, stay, stay up on things. When we meet the requirement, he turns. It's not us turning him. It is by reason of the fact that we now came into compliance with what God is expecting of us. Thus, he began to do what he would have already done anyway. Praise God. Uh, for example, somebody will ask the question, and if somebody on death row turns to the Lord and repent, and ask Jesus to come into their heart, will the Lord save them? Undoubtedly. That John, if John 1, 12 is true, that undoubtedly, he will go into their heart and save them. But they, maybe they may not have enough works to prove. And so on the day of coronation, which is a separate thing, where we are bequeathed with ranks and files and positions and honor, and adjurations and lifting and commendations by God, they would have nothing to cast down. See, because they wouldn't have borne much fruit and wouldn't have lived for God, wouldn't have had anything exemplary for some other person to follow to say that they will share in the stars of their crown. Are you understanding of me? So that person isn't the same as you who have been given an opportunity. To walk freely and to exemplify Christ and to live for him and to love the unlovable and to break the systems that exist. Praise God. Now, the third thing is that fasting is not a religious duty. If it is a religious duty, then you have you are quite for a sake in your thinking. It is not a religious duty. That's what the Lord said. When you fast, you have to hide it, basically. That's why he said you have to wash your face and anoint your head. Fasting is not a religious duty. So as to where you, the only reason why it is broadcasted or made clear that we are 
It's so because we are doing it as a community of believers. And as a community of believers, of course, we have to announce it. But if individually you want to seek the face of God and for, you know, for a particular thing, then it behooves you to keep it private and secret. So your fast is unto God and that he blesses you in the open. If you will seek me early, you will find me, the scripture says. The scripture says, if you draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. So it is a promise of God to hear his children. Praise God. Now, fasting is not a religious activity. Fasting is a spiritual activity. Religion, regalia, are systems of beliefs, systems of man-made um, you know, ideas enriching God. God has already come to us in the person of Jesus Christ. God has already come to us in the great person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By religion, we are trying to get to God. But by spirituality, true spirituality, which is in Christ Jesus, God already came to man. And we respond. We respond. The Bible says, while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why they have better sense to receive him. Christ died for me. He accepted me. Hallelujah. And robed in me in his righteousness. Washed me by the blood of the Lamb. Put this precious Holy Spirit inside me. Praise God. Whilst we're yet sinners, Christ died for me. Not when I was good, but whilst I was yet a sinner. Praise the Lord. Now the blood of Jesus Christ, after I became saved, the blood keep cleansing me. Amen. And the blood will keep cleansing until the day two things would happen. I either expire in the earth to go to be with the Lord or the Lord come to be with me. Are you understanding of that? Hello, come on. Are you understanding of it? So you, uh, we understand that in fasting, we are not using it as a religious cliche. Oh, come see, I fasted 40 days. Look how skeletal I look. And that's all the result and all, all the reward you're going to get. Fasting is not an exhibition of human piety. Fasting is a humbling of the soul before an almighty God. Amen. Are you hearing me? What did I say? Fasting is a humbling of the soul. It is a what? The humbling of the soul, not the face. So you can have a long face and have a disjointed soul. You may have a face of piety and your soul is not bowed down truly to God. I'm teaching pretty good now. I want you to hear me. Because there are things we think fasting is. But we have to have understanding about fasting. Especially in our year of enlargement and expansion. Praise God. And as we look in Isaiah the 58th chapter and Mark the 9th chapter, you're going to see how, why it is important. Why it is important for anybody who understands spiritual matter to see fasting as a part of your life. Just like breathing is. Just like eating is. Just like exercising it. Just like dressing your body is. You will see it as a part it's not something out there we go and pull and we do to score some marks. No. It is a part of our lives and must become a part of our lives. This must be our life forever. Praise the Lord. This must be, yeah, it must. It must be our life forever. Now I can tell you by the word of God both Old and New Testament, the, the, the great benefits of fasting. I can equally tell you from Isaiah, the 58th chapter, the wrong format of fasting and its ensuing results. But may God help us, especially the New Testament church, may God help us from the spirit of religion. It's killing many people. It's a form, we have a form of godliness. But we're denying the power. We have a form. 
That form suggests, oh yes, I do this three times a day. Oh, I do this five times a day. All those things may be good. They are disciplines that one has to put in place. But the basis for doing it has to change. The basis for doing that should not be that you're trying to score points. The basis for doing that is for proper receptivity. Now, when we're kids, we used to have a particular brand of radio. Some, you know, if, if you ever lived with grandpa and grandma, you would know Akasanuma. And that radio was very good. But what happened was, if you were in the wrong section of the house, you couldn't quite get any station at all. The problem was not the radio. The problem was where you were positioned. And so if you would move a little bit, you begin to see, you, you hear you know, some static thing going on, and soon you be, start picking up on you know, sound. And if you move right, and we have this thing you have to pull, what do you call that? The, uh, the antenna, you have to pull, pull up. And if you pull it out right, then you could hear sometimes even BBC, praise God. You're sitting somewhere in West Africa, but you can tune in and be hearing people broadcasting from the United Kingdom. Sometimes you hear Voice of America. Amen. The problem was not the radio. The problem was the reception. All of that news was still going on. You realize that they never at any point stopped so that you may pick up you, you may pick up where they are the news was still going ongoing and there are many people that god is still ongoing but they have not caught up yet with what the lord may be doing they have not yet come to fine tuning fine tuning themselves because they are flesh led they are mind led they are not spirit led but if you will fast you will pull down and tear down the layers of this body. And you see the inner man of the heart will begin to advance and come forward. And he begins to lead. He begins to guide. He begins to speak. Amen. I'll, I, I, I'll tell you, the natural senses will tell you, you are tired, rest. But the inner man of the heart in your fast will quicken you to arise and to pray. That's the spirit of God. Satan has never ever led anyone to pray. Never. His purpose is to actually mute that whole sensitivity to praying. That you do not pray. And I do not pray. But may the God of all wisdom show us a good understanding about what fasting is about. And why it is imperative that we seriously consider fasting as a part and parcel of our Christian walk. The early church fathers used to fast on Wednesdays. On Wednesday, they dedicated it for fasting. And then down through the years, they added Fridays. In the times we are living in, we are actually feasting on those two days. And we will only fast should something serious happen and then we will get into fasting ah please let fasting become a part of our life all right let's go to isaiah chapter 58 and look on the screen this is important you came to be taught the word of god open your eyes you came to be taught the word of god isaiah chapter number 58 Verse number 6. Alright, let's start from verse number 3. Verse number 3. Isaiah 58 from verse number 3. says, why have we what? Why have we what? Why have we fasted? They say. And you have not seen. So, the proper mode of fasting will cause God to see you. The understanding here is that if you will fast right, you'll be seen. 
But it says, they say, why have we what? Why have we fasted and you have not seen? So fasting must draw God's light on a person. Amen. Fasting must turn the eyes of the Lord on an individual because a broken and a contrite spirit God will never despise. We, why have we fasted, they say? It says, and you have not seen. You are supposed to see, but you haven't seen it. You haven't seen it because we haven't done it right. Our motive for doing it is wrong. Why have we afflicted our souls? How, why have we what? Somebody down in East Africa told me that when they fast, they don't sleep on the bed. They lay on a cold cement floor. And they make sure they lay on one side. I don't quite understand where they got that from. But they make sure there is such brutality to the human body. That they really put this body through the, the meal, so to speak. They make sure this body is in pain. And the more painful it is, the more God will hear. As a brother, I'm not quite sure where you've been reading that from. But you could still lay on your bed and God speak to you. Down in Carolina, I had some friends who were seeking, wanted to seek God. And one of them decided they would go in the woods. And I decided to stay in my room. He came back with ticks and all kinds of things on him very sickly. And I asked him, how, how, how did he go? He said, boy, he had to fight the weather, wild beast, and all sorts of things. Well, praise God. God has given us a grain of wisdom. Amen. Praise God. The God in the forest is as God also in your bedroom. God, don't shut me down. Praise God. It's, it's religion. Religion is making you put additional effort and weight on something that God is not in it. Says, why have we afflicted our souls? And you take no notice. Does it mean that you should not go to a solitary place? You must. You must, because sometimes you have to get away from all the busy, uh, pe busy life, people talking all around us and all that, and get into a secluded place to pray. Jesus the Lord went into the wilderness to pray. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Hallelujah. The Bible says he went up to the mountain to pray. Praise God. So there is a need for a separation. Huh. Why have you afflicted our souls and you take no notice? So God has to take notice if the fast is right. Come on, talk to me. God has what? But he's not taking notice. He's not taking notice because it's not done right. You are doing it on counting days. Instead of on focusing on seeking his face. You are too mirror sensitive. You like to go and look in the mirror. What have you lost on your face? What have you lost on your stomach? And that's all the result you are getting. Maybe you don't understand how serious it is. Self-worship is idolatry. Repeat that after me. Self-worship is what? If you ever have to look in the mirror ten times in a day, there is something wrong with you. Some men are even far worse. They twitch, they turn. I don't know what they're looking at. Same face, same face. Or are you trying to stab something else on the face or what you're trying to do? Accept yourself as God has made you. You're wonderfully made and beautifully made by God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Unless something scratched your cheek and you want to check. But nothing has scratched it. you all keep going. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't shut me down. I'm, I'm preaching real good here. It's self-worship. Self-worship. Self-entertainment. Sometimes even our prayer is self-entertainment. It's not to God. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> self-entertainment. Sometimes we're even borrowing somebody's tongues. To make up for ours. And you want what? A breakthrough. You're not serious. You want what? Breakthrough. Break forward. Uh, there's somebody looking for God and they are at the point where God must visit them 
and look at what they are doing. They are on a bed flipping channels on the television. Calabra Telebo. You are not serious. You are, you are just not serious. You, 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 you're just being a fool. You are not serious. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. You think God is your, your what? Garden boy. Hey. You're not serious. When people are afflicting their soul, laying on one side and hurting their systems to try to get God to answer them small. You two, you're on the far opposite end. Comfort in Zion, killing people. What to them who are at ease in Zion? A person will want to pursue God. That person need to say to themselves, the two arises in the book of Isaiah. Arise, arise. We are too passive. Too passive. Too passive. No wonder sometimes when we lead prayers, people sleep. The reason they sleep is because we are not on fire. The old preachers used to say, God, light me up on fire. That the world may come and see me blaze. And that they may see the glory of the Lord. Are you listening? I say, are you listening? Amen. He <laughs> says, you don't take notice. In our affliction. In fact, in the day of your fast, that's when you find pleasure. You know what pleasure is? All the soap opera you have not watched a whole month. You line them up and you watch them series by series. So you make up for your six o'clock to go and call what you call. You break your fast. You are wasteful. You have to understand the dynamics of fasting. Fasting is not for pleasure. Fasting is for the humbling of the soul. And that it, it says in the day of your fast you find pleasure. And exploit your laborers. Exploit your laborers. One of the worst things in life is for a born again, spirit filled, tongue talking Christian to cheat and rob another spirit filled, tongue talking Christian. Rob them. Take money from them and rob them. And rob them while speaking even in tongues. And it's fine. Somebody comes to work for you instead of you to pay them the fair wage. You are using spirituality to cover up what you should be doing. The Bible says the laborer deserves his wages. Amen. The laborer deserves, and we are exploiting people. Verse number four onwards. It says, indeed, you fast for strife. One guy said, when I fast, you don't talk to me. If you, if you talk to me the wrong way, uh, chances are that I'll fight you. <laughs> I never could understand why is it that when we fasted, it was quite rather easy to get very angry. Now, I think I came up with a solution. I said, I think. So don't nail me on it. I think when you fast biologically, you have a lot of glucose now that enters into your system. And when the, you have so much glucose in your system, for those of you who don't drink water at all, you, you, you begin to become hyperactive. And so, like very erratic, a person whose sugar level isn't stable becomes very erratic. I think. Amen. Yeah, they say when I fast, don't talk to me. When I fast, don't, don't, don't look. This has been a television broadcast of the Fresh Fire Worldwide Ministries, bringing salvation, healing, and deliverance. happy you listen to the broadcast and we want to give you an opportunity if you have not made Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord as at yet. We believe that by receiving the person of Jesus into your life, 
your life will be made anew. The Bible tells us in John's Gospel that if we believe on him, he will give us the right or the power to become children of God. Your life will take a different turn, a better turn. Now simply pray after me, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and need your forgiveness. Forgive me of all my sins and wash me in your precious blood. I believe that Jesus Christ is a son of God and he came to die for my sins. Friends, if you pray that simple prayer under the basis and the authority of God's word, your spirit has been reborn. Find a Bible-believing church that preaches and teaches the word of the Lord without any fear and grow in it. Or else, just come right by our, any of our services and you'll be greatly blessed. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.